Hey everybody, it's Jenny Lee. We got a crazy connection going on right here. I don't know why. Um, just gonna wait for a couple people to get on here. It's gonna be a brief video, but I'm just here to shed some truth and light in the name of the Lord Jesus on this Father's Day. Uh, happy Father's Day to everybody that's a father. And um, for anybody suffering today, I just want to tell you that our Heavenly Father loves you very much. And I appreciate your time. And I pray that the love of God be shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Ghost with fire, with power. So let us just be encouraged. Let us be motivated. Let us stay in faith even against all opposition. And sometimes that opposition is even from our own selves. Sometimes that opposition is even from our own conscience. Sometimes our opposition is even from our own outlook. And so let us be renewed in the spirit of our mind because it's how we see things that directs the rest of the course of our life, how we view things, how we view Jesus, how we view our Heavenly Father, how do we view the Holy Spirit's power and the Holy Spirit in general. It's our perspective which shapes the course of our life. Welcome Michael, welcome Peter, welcome Chinwi. I pray peace and multiply joy upon you in the name of the Lord and I hope everybody's having a blessed day so the Lord just prompted me to do a video about Jesus about Jesus and my question to you all today and myself included is the blood of Jesus Christ enough for you is the blood of Jesus Christ enough for me? Is the blood of Jesus Christ of Nazareth enough for all of mankind to cleanse us of all sin, of all unrighteousness? You see, it was paid for in full at the cross and to get our minds into perspective, to get our minds into alignment with what has already been done. That is the key to victory. And so we are victorious in Christ, not in ourselves, in the righteousness by faith in Christ. We are the righteousness of God in Christ is the key word there, in Christ. And I know not everybody believes in and on Christ and all the promises thereof in his name. But at the name of Jesus, demons tremble. At the name of Jesus, there is power. At the name of Jesus, chains break. In the name of Jesus, the power of darkness breaks off of us. In the name of Jesus, every heavy yoke of oppression is lifted off of us. Let us take off the garment of heaviness today. Let us put on the garment of praise because there's no need to live feeling defeated. There's no purpose in living feeling squashed, feeling like we want to throw in the towel, feeling like we want to give up, living in depression, living in gripped by fear and anxiety. These things are not of the Heavenly Father that we serve. These things are of the enemy. And so is the blood of Christ enough to break the power of depression off our lives, to break the power of worry off our lives, to break the power of fear off our lives, to break the power of discouragement, anxiety, worry, hopelessness, and all other such things that are sent as the enemy's assignment to take us out, really. It's not going to work, though, because the enemy's assignment has been canceled by what was done at the cross, and so it's how we view what was done at the cross that really determines victorious living because be it unto you according to thy faith. So we must be renewed in the spirit of our mind that we may prove what is the good and perfect and acceptable will of the Lord for our lives. And sometimes we don't just hear God in our ear canal, but he channels heaven into our heart, into our gut. There's a feeling, a, a gut feeling 
where we know something's wrong, we know something's right, but he's cleansed our conscience. By the blood of Christ, our conscience is cleansed. We don't have to live in defeat. We don't have to live in shame. We don't have to live in guilt. We don't have to live in condemnation any longer. We can come to the throne room of grace boldly as sons and daughters and declare victory. Jesus is Lord of all over our minds, our soul, our heart, our body, and our soul is made up of mind, will, emotions. The spirit is made up of communion, conscience, intimacy with God. And so there's a waging of war between the soul and the spirit. There's an internal conflict going on at all times. And we may not always feel the effects of that internal struggle, a lot of the times we feel peace, and we are to feel peace because the scripture uh, commands the blessing of peace upon our lives. We are to feel joy because the scripture commands the blessing of joy upon our lives. And so the kingdom of God is not meat and drink, but it's righteousness, joy, peace in the Holy Ghost. And so it's time to walk out the promises of God. And in Him, all the promises are yes. And all the promises are amen. His word shall not return void. Because even when we are faithless, he is faithful. He is faithful who has begun a good work in us to complete it until the day of the Lord shall come. So my question to you today to reflect upon, including myself, my, the question is self-directed as well. For reflection is the blood of Jesus is the blood of Jesus Christ is it enough for you is the blood of Jesus Christ enough for me because at times we may beat ourselves up we may put too much pressure upon ourselves to to strive to do better to be better and there's nothing wrong with wanting to live a better life, wanting to live in holiness, wanting to live in righteousness, but to come into the agreement and understanding with the promise of God that we are the righteousness of God in Christ and the power of right believing gives us the ability to walk it out by the power of the Holy Spirit, baptized with the Holy Spirit and with fire. So when we are doubting ourselves it's it's a form of blasphemy against Christ and against the cross because Jesus has spoiled principalities powers at the cross the victory has been won so it's about coming into alignment coming into agreement with what has already been done what has already been promised for us and for our lives and so when we start to get into the mindset of believing we're not good enough, you know, we're never going to get this thing right. Oh, I did it again, whatever that thing may be. These repetitive cycles are just never going to get out. I don't know what's going to happen. I don't know how to do this. I think I got to do more. I think I got to pray more. I think I got to fast more, which we do. Those are all good things under grace, under grace. The grace of God will empower us to live a holy life. The grace and love of God will empower us to treat ourselves as Christ would have us to be treated, to allow ourselves to be treated as Christ would have us to be treated. The love and grace of the Lord God Almighty will allow us to have a revelation of loving ourselves. So we receive the love of Christ first, then we love ourselves, then we love others. It can't work any other way. But in order to get there, in order to do that, we must understand the love of God towards humanity. The love of Christ 
is what compels us. The love of Christ compels me to do these videos. The love of Christ compels us to do all that we do in word and in deed. Let us do all in the name of the Lord our God. So coming into agreement with the power of the blood of Jesus is a very important factor to our Christian walk. Because when we feel like we're in these cycles, when we feel and listen to the whispering lies of the father of lies, of the enemy to our souls, who tells us we're never going to get this thing right, we're never going to make it, we're never going to get out, we're never going to live up to the standard of Christ's holiness, we're never going to live up and measure up to the what God's called us to be. We're never going to live out our purpose and destiny. We don't know who we are, why we're here. I silence the voice of the accuser. I silence the voice of the enemy in the name of Christ because the accuser has been struck down who's accused the brethren day and night. So I just thank you, Father God. I thank you. Welcome, Bobby. Amen. Amen. Happy Father's Day to our Lord and Savior. Yes. So he's a good, good father. He's a good, good father. And we may not all have a perfect earthly father. We may have a false image of what um, the family unit in God's kingdom is as a whole. But it's really a display of the earthly kingdom, of the earth, heavenly kingdom. It's on earth as it is in heaven. So therefore, God created all things in the spirit first. So it's on earth as it is in heaven. So in heaven, God has a set system, a set order of things as he does in earth. But because we are a fallen people, some in general humanity because of the fall of Adam and Eve, there is flaws. There are flaws. There are faults in this earthly system. And maybe not all of us had had the most perfect image of an earthly father or relationship with our earthly father. But for those who are feeling um, down or weary, hey, Stephen, hey, Aunt Michelle. For those who are feeling down, for those who are feeling weary, for those who are feeling worn out, I'm just here to be an encouragement that we may not even have our Father on the earth still this Father's Day, and we may not have a Father that measures up to the standard that we wish to see. I will say I'm definitely blessed to have a wonderful Father. And although my father doesn't really go on Facebook a lot, happy Father's Day, if he happens to watch this. But I'm here to connect this right here to an, a heavenly perspective that our heavenly Father can do exceedingly above all we can think or ask, even above the most wonderful earthly father could ever do for us. He is our supplier. He is our provider. He is a way maker. When there seems to be no way, he will make a way. Because if he can do it for me, he can most certainly do it for you. He can most certainly do it for you. And so I thank my earthly father and family for all of their prayers over the years. Because without the power of prayer, what wouldn't consist that actually consists today? Many things. Many, many things. And so here we are on this awesome day. Awesome for some may be hard for others, but that's why I'm on here. I'm here to encourage you um, if you're going through things today and it's not such an easy day for you. I'm just here to tell you that the Heavenly Father loves you very much and so much that he gave his one and only begotten son, Jesus Christ, so that whoever would believe in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. And in the promises of God is peace. In the presence of God is, is fullness of joy, pleasures forevermore. 
his peace he leaves with us. It's not peace, a false sense of peace. It's not that false sense of security like the world will offer. The world is going to offer you many things. The world is going to offer you many pleasures and the world is going to offer you many false vices for peace. But there is no exchange for a spiritual peace, for a supernatural peace. It's peace beyond understanding. There's no words that can really express it. It, it just is what it is and it's just a beautiful thing. And uh, personally, that's what carries me through some of my toughest of days. So I just encourage um, people watching this video to not allow, um, not allow the enemy of our soul to creep in and whisper lies to us today. Not allow the enemy of our souls to creep in and whisper error into our lives, to whisper sorrow into our lives, to whisper regret into our lives. It's not an hour to be defeated. It's not an hour to be all beat up because I don't think Christ is coming back for a beat up bride, but I think he's coming back for a victorious one. And um, if we be dead with Christ, we shall also be raised and risen with Christ on the last day. So let us be resurrected in the spirit of our mind right now as we are seated in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. So when we are given the mind of Christ, we begin to see things from a heavenly perspective and anything could be happening in the natural. All hell could be breaking loose around us, literally, and actually is not just because of the hour and times that we're living in, but because in this world we shall have tribulation. But the Lord says, be of good cheer, because I have overcome the world. He has overcome the world. He has overcome death, hell, and the grave. And he's given us keys to the kingdom. So those keys have to do with binding, loosing, the power of prayer. So we have authority when these attacks come upon us. We don't just have to accept every thought that enters into our mind. We don't just have to accept every emotion that we're feeling and come into agreement. See, once you come into agreement with a thought that's not sent by God, that's not of heavenly perspective, that's not in the word, we have an open door. We've opened the door now to darkness. And once the darkness comes in through the one door, it opens up a whole can of worms, so to speak. It, there's other doors that open from thenceforth on and on and on and on. And then you have so much trouble just trying to get back by shutting five other doors just to get back to the first door that you originally opened. So we can be wise today and not... Um, choose to allow that first door to be open. I'd rather just uh, thank you, Stephen. I really appreciate your feedback. God bless you. Thank you for your commitment to the body of Christ and dedication. Welcome, Bexie. I love you and the Lord. Thank you for joining. I'm honored to have you, uh, you all on here. And so if we don't open the first door, we don't have to go through the struggle of closing the 10 doors that came after the four, first door was open just to get back to the first door that we opened to the enemy of our soul. See, it's like a whole domino effect. If the first domino doesn't fall and topple over, then all the dominoes behind it don't fall either. <laughs> so we can either um, <clears throat> run, run towards destruction and uh, tear everything down around us as we fall down into the pit, or we can use whatever pit we've had in our past and uh, come into agreement with God's word by pulling souls out of the fire, even hating the garment spotted by them. For the kingdom of heaven suffers violence and the violent take it by force. And this violence is a burning passion. It's not a violence that um, can come to mind when you think of that word, like beating people up or anger. It's a... a a, an action verb it's a, a passion it's a passion for people and so if all of hell tried to stop us in the past we don't have to allow that to continue um, 
dragging us down anymore. We don't have to allow, we don't have to allow the things of yesterday to command the things of tomorrow um, to be our truth because there is truth and there is only one truth and the one truth really is of God's word that Jesus is the way, Jesus is the truth Jesus is the life everlasting. No man comes to the Father but by Him. And so I'm completely uh, understanding and sensitive to the fact that probably not everybody watching this agrees the same way. Maybe you all do. But I'm just here to tell you the truth. The truth of God's Word. And so... As obedience to my conviction, here we are. And so I'm just here to tell you that our Heavenly Father loves us so much. And we can come boldly before His throne of grace. To the Advocate. See, Jesus is our Advocate to the Father. He intercedes on our behalf. There's a heaven-to-earth uh, spiritual operation that's always going on and on and on in the world that we cannot see in the invisible all things were created by him. All things were created for him. He is fighting for us. He is not against us. No weapon formed against us shall prosper. I pray that the Lord raises up a standard against every mental stronghold that's trying to drag us down today. Every imagination, every high and lofty thing. That would exalt itself against the knowledge of God. I bring you under subjection to the obedience in captivity to the mind of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. And in that, we can learn more. We can learn more as we receive the word of God. And he writes his laws upon our hearts. Then we know him. We know who he is. And we begin to know who we are. And we begin to have the understanding that God is and will always be who he says he is. We are and will always be who he says we are. And he's going to do what he said he will do. And that's really what settles it. The arm of flesh will surely 